time for Governor, two more questions. Governor, can I get a couple of questions about some sure. issues we've got? Of, of course. Uh, about you, the mansion you're here. You're going to ask me about anything. Okay. I, I never I never say anything is off limits. You're always very good about uh, that. Thank you, Governor. Um, there have been, we've noted, several incidents over the past couple of years at the mansion involving the inmate work crew. Um, and probably most notable amongst those issues, which have involved alcohol and contraband coming to and from the mansion. Well, I, I don't know that we've had alcohol come uh, to the mansion uh, by inmates or alcohol used by inmates. I don't know that there's any evidence of that at all. I think that's part of the question here. There's been certainly those suspicions. Um, you know. Well, I don't know where the suspicions have come from, but let me, t let me say this. An investigation is ongoing, uh, and that's appropriate, and I support that. Um, and I want to wait until the, the investigation to draw any conclusion about what may or may not have happened. But I know of no evidence that inmates have uh, uh, used, had access to uh, alcohol at but the governor's residence. Sorry for differing, but the, the reports that we've seen say that they found alcohol on the premises, hidden away. Um, they had to put locks on the liquor cabinet. A gentleman fell through the window under suspicion of being... No, 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 no. Uh, I don't know that that gentleman was under suspicion of uh, being intoxicated. Uh, he, was, he was working, uh, he fell, and he cut himself. But I don't know of any evidence whatsoever. And if you can bring it to me. Julie Stone wrote in her report that. What did she write in her report? She wrote that uh, she had evidence that uh, the gentleman had, there, she'd been told by other inmates that he'd been drinking. Wait a minute. Uh, that's not what she said in her report. Uh, I think she said in her report that there was no evidence. She did not smell any alcohol and there was no evidence that he had been drinking. I, I think that, if I'm wrong, I will, I will say I'm wrong about that, but I think I think what she said was substantially different than what you've implied. At that point, did, did the Correctional Institute uh, pick away and say that uh, they were concerned about safety and, and perhaps you directed that nothing should change? Uh, let me tell you that no one from the Correctional Institute has ever indicated to me any concern about safety. And if they've indicated that to you, I'm just curious as to why they would indicated to you and not indicated to me. Did you ever tell anybody not to change any protocols at, at the mansion regard, regarding safety? Regarding safety, uh, tell me what kind of safety protocols you're talking about. Well, when, after the gentleman fell through the window, I, as I understand it, there was quite a meeting that went on between various leaders of safety and other at the state patrol and the DRC, and it came to your attention and you directed that, you no, know, in fact, this should remain just the way it is. Um, you're talking about things that I have uh, no knowledge of. I, uh, um, you need to be more specific with me when you say there were meetings. Uh, what was discussed in those meetings uh, in regard to safety? What, what do you mean by safety concerns? Well, I guess specifically, did you ever tell anybody not to change any protocols? Um, what protocols? Not to change the program, to leave it just as it is. I think, it's, listen, this program started under Governor James Rhodes. But, but and, 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 and it has continued um, pretty much unchanged since the Rhodes administration. It's a good program. Uh, it provides a great benefit to the state of Ohio. It saves the state of Ohio uh, significant sums of money. And uh, if you will bring me a specific protocol that I did or did not ask to be changed, I will respond to you. Do, do the inmates serve liquor at your functions? No, they do not serve liquor at our functions. Beer and wine, though. We have an inmate that tells us that, that in fact, they serve beer and wine at your functions. Well, they may, um, they may serve uh, wine at a at a table as they're pouring wine or whatever, but uh, they do not, uh, in any way, uh, have access to to the consumption of wine. That's never would never be approved. Of. Does it seem safe to have people that are locked up doing that? Uh, these are individuals who are near. Uh, release. Some of them will be getting jobs in, in restaurants. In fact, we have, we have um, a couple of people who, who cook the food. Before I became governor, there was always uh, a paid chef. Um, we are using um, inmates who are in a culinary arts program uh, to perform that function. And it is our hope that when they complete their sentence, they will be well prepared to go to a restaurant and seek employment, and when they do that, they almost certainly 
would be engaged in the kind of activities that they are engaged in now at the governor's residence they they prepare some food they serve food and i think that's hugely appropriate one last question curtis carter it's important because we're going to address it tonight curtis carter was convicted of drug trafficking he was also the supervisor of this inmate crew as we understand according to the email chains that we see why did you choose to put him in charge in that position um i believe uh that people can reform do reform uh and i believe that people certainly should be given second chances uh everyone that i know in life has made a mistake and uh when uh a person has made a mistake and has paid the price for that mistake i i believe they are deserving of a second chance thank you thanks everyone thank you governor